back to Golden Blue Dude, everybody. If you like college football and you like college basketball, then you might want to think about hitting the like and subscribe button because that's all I do here and I do videos every single day. And don't forget to go check out the West Virginia YouTube channel through Mark Rogers. We'll be having a live show over there this evening around 8 o'clock. Another quick reminder to send in your short video clips saying I am going to Blue Dude or we are going to Blue Dude. That way I can get that video montage together. So far I've had a great response, but I want as many people as possible to participate in this. So just make a short clip and send it to my email address. I'll leave my email address in the description of this video. Today I wanted to talk about a game that changed the history of college football. And people really overlooked this game and all the ramifications and the shift in history it created in college football. And I'm talking about the 2011 Orange Bowl between West Virginia and Clemson, also known as the South Beach Beatdown. And yes, West Virginia did whoop Clemson 70-33. And it was nice to brag about that. That, that was nice for a while. But, but then it kind of faded away because of what happened afterwards. So today I'm asking the question, what happens if West Virginia didn't whoop Clemson in the 2011 Orange Bowl? So there's a few things that came from West Virginia beating Clemson, especially whooping them in that Orange Bowl. Number one, Clemson's defensive coordinator, Kevin Steele, was instantly fired. He was actually a decent defensive coordinator for Clemson. But after that butt whooping and West Virginia hanging 70 on Clemson, he was gone. And who did Clemson bring in? Brent Venables. And this is where history really got changed. I think this affects West Virginia. I think this affects Clemson. I think this affects Oklahoma. I think this affects USC. I also think this affects Alabama. So the entire landscape of college football would have been changed if this didn't happen. So the defensive coordinator, Kevin Steele, he's fired. They hire Brent Venables, so if West Virginia doesn't whoop Clemson, then Clemson doesn't fire Kevin Steele, and they don't hire Brent Venables from Oklahoma. Now, moving on to this next point, this is not a guarantee, but it's a probability. If West Virginia doesn't whoop Clemson in that Orange Bowl, then Clemson more than likely doesn't win any national championships. Why? Because they don't fire Kevin Steele and they don't hire Brent Venables. And we all know a big key reason Clemson won those national championships was because, yes, they had a great offense, but man, they also had a stellar defense, especially in that 2016 national championship team. And it was a Brent Venables defense that did it. So Clemson doesn't hire Brent Venables. Well, what happens to him? Well, Brent Venables is more than likely promoted to the head coaching position at Oklahoma in 2016 after Bob Stoops is fired. So we might be talking about Brent Venables' seventh year as the head coach at Oklahoma instead of his first year. So that's how this affects Oklahoma. So you already know that already translates into USC because USC doesn't hire Lincoln Riley as their new head coach because he doesn't have the success that he ends up having at Oklahoma because he's never the head coach because Brent Venables is not hired at Clemson and he's promoted the head coach at Oklahoma. All right, so since Clemson more than likely doesn't win any national championships, that means Alabama probably has two more national championships on their trophy shelf. Talking about 2016 and 2018 because who knocked them out? Clemson. In both those years, Clemson knocked them out. So if Clemson isn't the national champion in those two years, it's probably Alabama. So that leads to my next point. Dabo Sweeney probably doesn't last at Clemson. He doesn't have the success. They don't win the national championships. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that Clemson fires him, but maybe you never know because all that success that we've seen at Clemson doesn't exist. So because of that, Clemson probably doesn't get Deshaun Watson or Trevor Lawrence because Clemson doesn't have the success and they can't recruit at a high level. Deshaun Watson was at Clemson from 2014 to 2016 and of course Trevor Lawrence was at Clemson from 2018 to 2020. So no Deshaun Watson and no Trevor Lawrence at Clemson. Where do they end up going? That's another big question. Could be Alabama. They could actually help Alabama win those two national championships that they're missing on their trophy shelf. Another thing for Clemson, no six straight ACC titles for Clemson and those six straight playoff appearances from 2015 to 2020. Right now, Clemson is dominating the ACC. No, they didn't win it last year, but man, they were on a long streak and they're probably gonna have a bounce back here and win it again this year. I fully expect that. So no domination by Clemson. That's wiped out of the history books. Going back to my Alabama point. 
So if they were to win those 2016 and 2018 national championships, because Clemson is nowhere to be found, that means Alabama could have a four-peat under their belt. Because remember, they did win it in 2015 and 2017. So if you add 2016 and 2018, we're talking about Alabama as national champs 2015, 2016, 2017, and 2018. So let's move over to the West Virginia side of this equation. Uh, if West Virginia doesn't whoop Clemson, let's say Clemson actually beats West Virginia. I don't think Dana Holgerson lasts very long at West Virginia because that's what propelled him and kind of gave them confidence in Dana Holgerson. And since he doesn't last very long at West Virginia, Houston doesn't give Holgerson a ridiculous contract that I don't think he still earned anyways to become their next head coach. So this affects West Virginia and Dana Holgerson. On to my next point. Since Dana Holgerson doesn't last and I didn't think he was a very good coach, maybe West Virginia is able to get a decent coach sooner rather than later. And maybe West Virginia does manage a Big 12 championship. Yes, that's a stretch, but it's a possibility. And maybe West Virginia is able to actually beat Oklahoma at least once since joining the Big 12. That's right. We have not been able to beat Oklahoma since being in the Big 12. And most of that time, Holgerson was our head coach. Yes, Neil Brown has come in at 2019, but he's in the rebuilding process. So it was more likely to happen under Holgerson. That didn't happen. Well, if he doesn't last and we have more time to rebuild, maybe we're on the higher part of this climb to where we're a better team and actually able to beat Oklahoma at least once. I know that's also a stretch, but definitely possible. Another thing is I don't think Horns Down becomes a money-making merchandise because of Holgerson in 2018. That's right, it came out that Holgerson literally asked the refs, hey, if we do Horns Down, we're not gonna get flagged, are we? And he reportedly said that the refs said, no, it's not. His players did it anyways. They did get flagged and it became a thing. So if West Virginia doesn't whoop Clemson, Hogerson doesn't last very long, that conversation with the refs don't happen, and Horns Down merchandise is nowhere to be found for West Virginia. So that's actually a positive effect because trust me, I like my Horns Down merchandise. Finally, the last thing, this goes back to Oklahoma. Baker Mayfield in 2017 and Kyler Murray in 2018 the two former Oklahoma quarterbacks do not win the Heisman Trophy at Oklahoma because Lincoln Riley was never hired. And we all know that Lincoln Riley was the quarterback whisperer. Brent Venables, I think he's going to do great at Oklahoma, but he's more of a defensive guy. I don't think he's a quarterback whisperer. Therefore, I don't think he would have coached Heisman Trophy winning quarterbacks at Oklahoma. So you see the full trickle down effect. Of course it would affect West Virginia, definitely would affect Clemson in a very negative way. Also would affect Oklahoma because Brent Venables doesn't go away so he's promoted sooner rather than later. It affects USC because Lincoln Riley doesn't have the success he has at Oklahoma. And it affects Alabama because they have more national championships because Clemson isn't there to deny them those two national championships. So yes, I do think the 2011 Orange Bowl had a massive history changing effect on college football. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Is there something I missed that maybe it might have altered or changed in the history of college football? That's all I got for you this show. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you on my next show.